This is the Inuitian region of Canada. It's the northernmost of all geological regions. It's cold, it's dark, but also it's an exotic place. Today I'm going to interview three people who knows a lot about the Inuitians. Here's Jackie, Daniel, and Robin. So Jackie, first of all, how were the Inuitians formed? Two million years ago, the Ice Age turned the north cold and snowy. Glaciers covered most of the land, pushing the land down and created the lowlands of the Arctic archipelago. The high part formed the Arctic Cordillera, and the north part is covered by mountains. But some say that the north was actually warm millions of years ago. Is that true? Absolutely. It's a result of continental drift. 250 million years ago, there was this one huge continent on Earth, the Pangaea. Slowly land breaks away from each other and form their own continents. And what makes today's Inuition region? Well, it's mainly two zones of mountains with terrain in between. Queen Elizabeth Islands and Elzira Islands are also part of the region. The dry north section is covered with ice caps. Thanks, Jackie. But everyone knows that the north is very, very cold. But that's not the case all the time. Daniel, can you tell us about the climate over there? Okay. Being in the Arctic region, the Inuitians have a very short summer with continuous daylight, but the temperature can actually reach 30 degrees. Interesting. How about the winter? Well, the winters are long, dark, and sometimes as cold as negative 35 degrees. I see it's cold up there, and some of you may wonder what kind of animals can survive in that situation. Robin, can you explain to us? Yes, it's really a hard place for any animals to live in. Some common animals are polar bears, arctic wolves, arctic hares, and arctic foxes. Narwhals, beluga whales, walrus, and seals live in the ocean there. And what kind of plants grow there? Only small plants grow in thick insulating mats so that they can protect themselves. Some plant species are arctic black spruce, arctic willow, cotton grass, and cabrizia. So there aren't a lot of natural resources. Well, there are little vegetation and not many animals, but there are a lot of fish. There are some non-renewable resources such as metals, minerals, diamonds, gold, silver, platinum, coal, and oil. But they are all difficult to reach. You need advanced and expensive equipment and transportation like icebreakers. Okay, so now we know that it's hard for us to even reach there, but there are still some people who live there permanently, aren't there? Yes, the Inuit are the aboriginal people who live in the Inuitian region. Traditionally, they live in tents during the summer and igloos during the winter. Now most of them settled into small modern communities. They also hunt for food, there's a special diet they invented called pemmican. It's a highly concentrated food with high energy and also can be stored for a long time. How do they hunt? They use bows, lances, and arrows to kill their targets. And the weapons are made of stone, walrus, ivory, bone, copper, and skin. But how do they fit in the modern world? Inuit work in every department of the nowadays economy and some of them work for the government. Tourism is a fast-growing industry for them. They take the visitors around on their sleds and let them enjoy the exotic north. Wow, that must be an exciting trip. Thanks, guys. But before we finish, can you guys tell us some trivia about this mysterious region? Well, Canada has 22 of the world's 110 icebreakers. That's one-fifth of the total number. Europeans first found this place because of the search of Northwest Passage to China. Of course, it's the same case for the whole North America. One of the environmental concerns for the Inuitians is the global warming. Ices are melting away faster and it can change our lives forever. Hmm, 
Those are some interesting facts. I guess we're done for today. Everyone must know a little bit more about our Inuition region now. Guys, thank you for talking to us. Thank Go you. On. No problem.